What surprised no one when it failed? When the guy in Florida, I think that's where it was, tried to walk across the ocean in his home made floating hamster ball and was marooned at sea. I'm intrigued by the engineering making it possible to breathe properly inside a ball that has to be watertight. Edit, spelling. And also, I'm obviously talking about a new invention where the purpose is long sea voyages, and it is a hamster ball. It does have to be watertight, because I'm not keen on spending days on end wet. Having a kid to save the relationship. Edit, wow ridiculous response. Thank your good strangers for the awards. Reading through the comments is a bit of a journey of emotions for so many out there. Me and my ex-wife got married to save the relationship. I bet you can guess how well that worked. Didn't Soldier Boy try to create his own video game system? One that ran pirated Nintendo games, yes. Quibi. I'm friends with a relatively known B actor who was in one of their shows, the amount of money they were throwing at talent was insane. As an actor, he didn't care what platform it was or if it would last. It was acting, he got a barrel full of money, and got to act in a decent show w other fine actors. It was such a vanity project for Katzenberg and Whitman. Taco Bell in Mexico. No explanation needed. Anyone remember Amazon's Fire Phone? Got one for free when Amazon gave one to everyone that showed up to the phone dev session at their re-invent conference. Sold it on eBay as soon as I got home. Made like $200, so I loved it. The movie, Cats. With every trailer, everyone commented how much a train wreck it looked like it was going to be. Sure, some people thought it would be in the, so bad it's good, fun stage. But nope. It's just bad. When it failed at the box office, no one was surprised. I remember going to see The Lion King, when the trailer for Cats came on, and the kid behind me started crying. Anytime a friend, co-worker, or family member invites you to their MLM party. Yes, Molly, I'm sure this asterisk will asterisk be like a full-time income where you set your own hours. People will be clamoring to buy overpriced kitchen gadgets from you that they can get on Amazon. I feel like the Tupperware parties of the 70s and 80s were the only time an MLM was worth it. It was such a fantastic product that every family on the block bought loads of it. My brother-in-law's fifth marriage. Six times a charm. The condom I kept in my wallet for two years. Replace it before it deceives you in a more expensive way. Prohibition. Kind of incredible that this was something that happened in the last 100 years. Edit. I am specifically talking about alcohol prohibition in America. I know it exists in other forms. Tanacon. Was anyone really surprised? I mean, the title of the event was the ultimate truth in advertising, Tanacon. That time the state of Oregon tried to blow up a beached whale with dynamite. Happened back in 1970. And fortunately we had video cameras back then. Don't try this at home, kids. The end of this video sums it up best. They'll certainly remember what not to do. Link. Edit. For the umpteenth person who pointed out that they didn't fail to blow up the whale, the failure was their effort to remove the whale from the beach. Sorry, I didn't realize it was so important to clarify this. Edit 2. If you have never been to the Oregon coast it is one of the most beautiful places in America, even the small town where the whale explosion happened. For those who are wondering what happened to him, he wrote it off as a success and guess what happened next. Quote dot 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 quote. He got promoted. The guy who built a homemade rocket in order to go to space and prove the Earth was flat. Exactly what everyone assumed would happen, happened. R.I.P. Crazy Man. Edit, in response to the unending comments and private messages about how he was just pretending to get flat earthers to fund him, I cite one of my favorite Kurt Vonnegut lines, we are what we pretend to be. Wait, a asterisk flat E-A-R-T-H-E-R asterisk built a functioning rocket? Hooters Airlines. Just imagine if that was launched today. There was a Kingfisher Airline, and for a good while it was kinda the premier airline in India. For context, the Kingfisher here is a beer company, it's like if the States had a Budweiser Airline. Juicero. That guy who tried to travel to the North Sentinel Islands in the hopes of converting its inhabitants to Christianity. For context, the inhabitants of North Sentinel Islands kill anyone who tries to approach with bows and arrows, and nothing is off limits, even aircrafts. 
a former co-worker was telling me this story, which of course I already knew because it was national news, and I said offhand that the guy was a effing idiot and that him being killed was the most predictable outcome. I then found out they were college roommates and friends and I've never put my foot in my mouth so hard but I still stand by what I said. Me when I was rejected from university. My dad literally just told me, anyways, get up early tomorrow, you got a woe work. Movie pass. But oh was it a good summer at the theater. Years ago when I was a white belt sparring a black belt and getting cocky. I was a yellow belt when I did this. Ended with three broken ribs because I took a spinning back kick hard. Jeez, did you even do one before? Target Canada. This will be a business case study for centuries. It was the titanic of new ventures. Pretty much everything that could go wrong did, much of it out of misplaced hubris. I remember reading an interview with the head of Target Canada in Report on Business magazine, published by our national newspaper of record, The Globe and Mail. He was enthusing about how Canadian stores were going to get brand new shelving. As someone who had been in grocery nearly 20 years at that point, I knew instantly the company was doomed. Shoppers don't care about shelving, they care about what's on the shelves. And there wasn't much. One of the biggest reasons is that rather than go with an established inventory control system such as SAP, Target decided to import its own. Except, they forgot to metricate it, leading to shelf capacities being dramatically wrong for every SKU. It all just compounded from there. To save money, Target outsourced warehouse to store delivery. In practice that meant trucks arriving with skids of missing product and more skids of broken product and no ownership of the issues. Rather than recruit people with big box experience, they relied heavily on MBAs, meaning management was even further out of touch with the events on the ground than they could have been. It was just a horror show all around, and a mercy when it finally died. And hash X200B. Incidentally, Krispy Kreme made many of the same mistakes. You can't just barge into Canada thinking it's just like the United States. The retail, and food service, cultures are very, very different. Edit. If you want a deeper dive, this is a great read, link. EDIT2, several kind individuals have pointed out my error. Target used SAP instead of its proprietary system. I should have recalled that. I was with Sobeys when they implemented SAP, the second time because they failed the first time. SAP is the sine qua non of retail software but it is demanding as hell. Target Canada was so fascinating. We were all so excited about it. And then they arrived here and their prices were so high compared to one, Walmart Canada but two, Target America. But I vividly remember trying to purchase items there for Christmas and they only had two red plates and one Santa, it was incredible lol. It was like if I tried to open a chain of stores. Movie Pass. They were an app that, for a monthly charge, allowed you to see one free movie every day at almost any theater. You get a Movie Pass debit card, which Movie Pass loads with money to cover the cost of a ticket. They operated at a severe loss, one monthly charge and they'll pay for as many movies as you want. Their golden path to success was picking up all of a theater's patrons onto their service and then threatening to remove theaters from their app if they didn't give a share of their concessions revenue. For smaller theaters, family-owned chains and such, it worked, they had no choice. Give MoviePass the share, or lose almost all of their business. They eventually claimed to control 60% of AMC's traffic, and issued their ultimatum to AMC. AMC told them to F off, so MoviePass removed AMC from their app. MoviePass stock fell to almost nothing overnight and the company doomed itself. AMC was eventually re-added to their app, but the killing blow had already been dealt. MoviePass started to change the deal on their customers as they were running out of money, constantly removing features and blocking popular movies or locations. They finally went under after some time. I'm a box office cashier and I hated MoviePass. They operated their business and communicated with their customers as though we were partners, but we had nothing to do with each other. Edit. I need to look back at their app again to confirm this. It felt this way on the cashier side, but I've been told this wasn't the case guests thought they already had a ticket after, reserving, it on MoviePass. They got angry at the theater, and the cashier, when a show was sold out or otherwise, because they thought the ticket belonged to them. The number of people who got angry with us because MoviePass wasn't clear was insane. 
and their entire business model was riding on the hope of undermining the industry, rather than supplementing it. Obligatory disclaimer that I work for AMC, but I don't speak for the company. These are just my thoughts on the matter. An obedience school for cats. Google Plus will go down in history as one of the worst, most pointless decisions any tech giant has ever made. Up there with Microsoft and RIM dismissing the iPhone as a toy when it came out. Asterisk asterisk edit. Asterisk asterisk I should probably edit this to say one of the worst asterisk executed asterisk decisions. I understand there was potential, I understand it did things well that appealed to certain niche communities, but it was largely trying to do something Facebook had already dominated for a decade. And did it in a way that limited signups and very publicly fed with user privacy, all without differentiating themselves asterisk enough asterisk from Facebook to be able to tell anyone why they should switch. It was a boondoggle. Zoom. I loved mine, but there was no way it was going to become the iPod killer it was trying to be. The war on DG. Spoiler alert, DG won. The Segway. It was supposed to revolutionize the way we travel, according to its investors. Then for like a year every kid had a hoverboard. They disappeared like fidget spinners. Maybe because they kept exploding. I don't know. Zillow's attempt to become a real estate brokerage. Each transaction is unique and wasn't going to be an algorithm-based business. The CEO did a great takeover of the travel industry which lends itself to an algorithm. Real estate is much more complicated. Their app is a fun way for the public to enjoy exploring real estate and has many uses. However, investing in real estate as well as buying and selling real estate takes a human to evaluate the needs of each transaction. It's early, still on my first cup, but you get the idea. Edit. Wow, my first award. Thank you. Also, SP. It's technically thriving for the wrong reasons but NFTs, fun fact, even the guy who created them thinks it's a scam. The movie version of Asterisk Cats Asterisk. Thank you for watching. We upload new videos every day, so be sure to come back for more fun. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed the video.